Hi guys, Hannah here from Hannah Maria Plans and welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be planning out May in my journal but firstly let's take a look at how April turned out. April was a really strange month due to lockdown. Looking back, lots of the days blur into one and there are very few significant things I can actually pick out which is really unusual. I know some people aren't finding their bullet journal as useful at the moment, but I'm glad that it has kept me on track with my tasks and habits and also allowed a creative outlet when I've needed to de-stress. I know this is incredibly late and I actually started painting my May setup about halfway through April, after I put up a poll in my stories on Instagram to help me decide between a garden theme and a fluid alcohol ink style theme. It was quite close, but the garden theme ended up winning out, which I was really happy with. My boyfriend and I are lucky enough to live in quite a small village with plenty of greenery around. As our daily outside exercise, we've gone on lots of walks through the countryside and have been able to see the landscape change from quite bare and bleak to bursting with life. This theme has filled me with a sense of hope seeing flowers come into bloom and a familiar forest track become seemingly more and more green every time we've gone out. I feel lucky that when things indoors have become too much that I can get an enormous sense of peace and relief from standing in a meadow full of wildflowers just 10 minutes walk away. Of course, seeing the beautiful landscapes has inspired me to paint them but I've got a very limited experience with this kind of painting. I have long admired the style of Tara Jane art on Instagram and thought this would be the perfect opportunity to use her stunning pictures and videos to help develop my own skills. To try and emulate her style, this is another month where I'm using gouache as my primary medium. All supplies will be listed below, but for this first painting I'm using Mia Art Gouache with Arches Cold Pressed Watercolour Paper. Although I used to go straight in my journal with my cover pages, I now really like to paint it separately so that I can keep my originals together. Once this is finished, I'll make a print that I'll use to stick in, and the rest of the month will just be painted directly onto journal pages. For this painting specifically, I wanted to create the idea of a path winding through flowers towards some hills in the background. I used colours similar to my April theme for the sky to help tie it in a little to the previous month, but otherwise went wild with the colours I wanted to use. Because gouache can be quite opaque, I found that working my way from the top of the page to the bottom quite a helpful method for this painting. This allowed me to layer my brush strokes to show that as you move down the page, the flowers closer to us as the viewer are on top of the previous layer. Although this systematic approach was slow, it allowed me to break down the landscape into smaller, more manageable pieces. I think this is a big difference from watercolour, where you're relying on big washes and broad strokes due to its transparent qualities. Once I'd written in the title for the month, I moved on to my quote page. I wanted this quote to be something related to my theme, but also something that could translate as a message for me. Even when my patience is running thin and my mental health problems are bubbling close to the surface, I will achieve more through calm communication than I will by losing my temper or getting upset. The quote is by Rupi Kaur and reads, Raise your words, not your voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. Moving on to our next spread, we of course have the calendar. I really enjoyed the layout last month, so I'm bringing it back again. I don't think it would work quite so well for me when things are busier, but for now it's a really nice change from my standard vertical style. This time I'm doing distinct boxes for the days of the week and have a horizontal bar across the top of the page that will hold my illustration. 
For this piece, I wanted to do something slightly different, inspired by a recent sunflower painting by Big Blue Tang on Instagram. I started off this one by painting a very pale yellow background over the entire strip. I wanted to add in a little grey to make the colour a bit more muted, but then painted over it when I decided I didn't like it. Unfortunately, that has left me with a slightly green undertone to my sky, which is only slightly embarrassing considering I've mentioned being careful not to get a green sky on not one, but two of my previous videos. I'm assuming that it's due to the blue paint in the grey that I mixed up, and thankfully it's not that noticeable in the finished painting. I then start to layer up some muted olive greens I mixed up, starting quite pale and building to a darker colour before adding the sunflowers in over the top. I tried to use lots of different shades of yellow to add some dimension and depth, ranging from a deep yellow ochre to white with the tiniest bit of lemon yellow added. Using a fine liner, I wrote May in a blank space in the top left corner of the page before peeling my tape off carefully. Because I had some extra space to the side of my calendar, I decided to use a yellow Tombow to colour alternate lines and make an area for specific notes. It was only as I started drawing them that I realised the colour was completely different to my sunflowers, so I then used some more white gouache to paint over that area and fade it out a bit. I also made some inevitable mistakes when I was drawing the boxes of my calendar, so used a trusty white gel pen to cover up parts of the lines. If you use the bullet journal system and don't have a white gel pen, I cannot recommend it enough for touching up little areas like this. Next up is my habit and project spread. This one is particularly inspired by my walks during April when the bluebells were out in full force. There's something about seeing blankets of flowers covering a forest floor that is just so magical. I grew up adoring the flower fairies and it's moments like walking through the sun dappled forest surrounded by buttercups and bluebells that I can half convince myself that they exist. Okay, a little about the painting itself. I saw a reference picture from Studio Ghibli of a path leading through a forest and decided to adapt it to fit with my own photos. Rather than working from top to bottom, I wanted to cover all of the white areas with a base coat of paint first. One of the most important things to make a painting actually work is having enough contrast. Because of the opacity of gouache, it doesn't matter which order you do this in, because you can put light over dark and vice versa. I tend to switch up which way round I do it depending on the painting. I wanted to make sure that my dark areas were underneath the lighter colours on the spread so that it created the illusion of shadows on the floor and in the bushes. I initially painted around the trees and then went back in with browns and greys to fill them in, again trying to make sure that I had some variations in colour to create shadows and highlights which would make them much more 3D. For the bushes themselves, I like to block out larger shapes and then go back in with a smaller brush and some different greens to mark out a few leaves. This helps to give the illusion of detail without having to painstakingly paint every single leaf and saves a lot of time. Because of the pandemic, I've had to change my habits slightly, taking climbing off the agenda completely and just replacing it with exercise of any type. I've been struggling with motivation to work out at home and also have the sweetest tooth in existence, so I find that tracking each time I exercise but not each time I eat sweet food really helpful to make sure that by the time lockdown is over, I won't have to be rolled out of the house. I've found Instagram workouts really helpful because they give great ideas of what exercises to actually do, and I've also taken up running using the Couch to 5k app. 
at the time I'm recording this voiceover, I'm about to redo week three, but I'm still persevering. Even if I look like a tomato having an asthma attack every time I walk back through the door. At the beginning of lockdown, my boyfriend and I discussed that no matter how much we love climbing, there is no way we could or would build a small wall in our rented flat. Fast forward six weeks later and we now have a two meter high, 40 degree angled climbing wall in our living room. Crazy, I know, but it has already made the biggest difference to our exercise routine and mental health. The only thing I haven't shown you here are my projects in situ. I currently have this video, my May plan with me on the go, and a Skillshare class that I started at the beginning of April. I keep meaning to get back to it, but I've just been so overrun with other things that I want to be doing as well. That means the Skillshare class is still in the paint section, whilst the plan with me is in sound. I'm hoping that both of them will be done before too long. The next spread is another recent addition from last month. I found having a gratitude log really helped lift me up and to focus on the positives in April. Like I said earlier in the video, I have found the days where I haven't been at work and even somewhere I have are blurring into one another. This has sometimes made it hard to pick specific positive details out but I've realized it's even more important for me on those days than the days that I'm really down. They've also become some of my favorite things to look back on because they show me that I've done or experienced things that were meaningful enough to comment on. If I'm honest, I didn't always just pick things that I was grateful for, such as the ability to go and move my body outside in the sun, but also chose generally uplifting moments. Hilarious pub quizzes over Zoom, dancing silly and terrible dances in the kitchen whilst making dinner, and the kindness of a healthcare assistant at work acting as a translator for a terrified patient. These are the everyday moments that I want to remember and the moments that show me how adaptable and resilient we are as the human race. So I'm still calling it a gratitude log, but really it's just a place for me to write down positive thoughts. If you feel like you want to record some memories, but like me, can't face writing full-blown diary entries, I definitely recommend giving this a go. Given that my paintings this month are far more ambitious than I've ever been in gouache before, one thing I didn't expect is to find the process so relaxing. With the exception of my to-do list, these paintings all took a really, really long time, far longer than I would normally reserve for a spread, and normally I would find that stressful and frustrating, but this month it allowed me to get stuck into the creative process to engage with learning how the paint works, how to adjust my mixing techniques and which consistency of paint was best for which part. As I moved on to each subsequent spread, I found that I could take forward what I'd learnt and can just enjoy the act of painting. Don't get me wrong, I had panic moments every time that this one would turn out terribly and it would never leave the ugly stage. I honestly felt like some paintings were going to be an absolute disaster until the final brushstrokes were in, but I still enjoyed it. And I think that's why I'm looking forward to painting the spreads I haven't reached yet and why I'm already sad about the month coming to an end. I'm trying to work out future themes where I might be able to use a similar style, such as in Lord of the Rings. If you can think of anything, then leave me a comment down below. One thing that's attracting me to this style more and more is that the finished results have such a calming atmosphere as well. I find this tower really gives me fairy tale vibes, like Rapunzel would be letting down her hair at any moment. I can just imagine her getting into all sorts of mischief and adventures in this little world that's painted on my page. 
I swear I could be a professional daydreamer if that was actually a thing. To finish up, I needed to do the functional part of the spread. I drew small boxes down the side of each page and alternated whether they were black or white. In the Almanac journal, this was two dots high by two dots wide, but this will obviously vary in a more standard dot grid which has 5mm spacing. I could then pop the dates in, making sure black numbers were on the white background and vice versa, leaving space to write what I'm grateful for each day beside it. Finally, I added a simple brush lettered header up at the top with a trusty green border to match the painting and finish it off. After those few very lengthy spreads, I knew I needed something quicker for my to-do list. I opted for my standard grid format, where I have the days of the month along the top and my tasks down the side. Once I have made a start on a task, I like to put a dot in the square that corresponds to that date. If it's a task like going to the dentist that will be done in one go, I can then draw a line from the dot through the task and it will have been officially crossed off. If it's a task that will need to be done across multiple days, such as creating a YouTube video or a weekly spread, then I'll put a dot in each day that I work on it. Once it's done, I'll draw my line from the most recent dot through the task. This way, I can keep track of my tasks without having to write them out every single day, making sure nothing gets lost along the way. Round the outside, I wanted quite a simple meadow with some white flowers. I built up the background with a pale green colour before adding details like stems and leaves in progressively darker shades. I peeled off the tape at this point so that I could have some leaves creeping into the white space of my to-do list. The flowers are kind of based off daisies with white petals and yellow centres, but if I'm honest I wasn't going for any exact species. In general with these paintings, I found the suggestion of flowers a lot more powerful than painting them in great detail. Obviously, when you're so close up like this, you need to show some features, otherwise it would be very abstract. I think this would work even better with different colour flowers that you could also have extending into the grid, but obviously the white would not show up on the white page. I also added a few white and yellow dots to fill in some of the blank spaces and trialled using my gold jelly roll for a bit of sparkle, but it really gets lost unless you are up close and personal with the page. Luckily for me, every time this page catches the light, I do get to enjoy that little extra shimmer the gold gives. I might not be one for jewellery in my day-to-day -day life, but when it comes to my journal, I am a magpie. It feels like it's taken a long time to get here, but we are finally at our final spread of the video, and of course it's our first weekly spread of the month. This is another painting that has been adapted from Tara's beautiful work. I wanted to have a diagonal slice from the top left to the bottom right of the page with my days set out down the right hand side. It shows a little path surrounded by grass and flowers following a peaceful canal towards some trees in the distance. I tackled those trees first, starting with a dark base layer before layering different shades of lighter green over the top and adding some trunks and branches. One thing I really started to struggle with throughout all of the spreads, but particularly at this point, was my gouache drying out. This is my very first set of gouache and it's from Mia Arts. I've talked about it previously, but it comes as a set of 18 30ml jelly-like pots of paint in a plastic box with two clips to hold the lid closed. I think a combination of leaving the box open either accidentally or when I'm painting, and that amounting to hours of exposure to the air and the lid not creating a brilliant seal over the paint, has led to the gouache drying out rather significantly. 
I've tried a few things to minimise drying since I bought this palette back in November, such as spraying it with water intermittently and using a cocktail stick to mix up the pot and allow the dry paint to reincorporate. But it hasn't worked. At this point, it's mostly still usable, but with some difficulty. The paint is thinner because I'm having to use water to reactivate it all the time and therefore it doesn't have that thick, velvety quality that is much more satisfying and pleasant to paint with. It's also lacking in opacity as a result and I find I'm having to use much more white from a new separate tube in order to create how I would like to. Now this isn't something I'm hugely surprised about, it was incredibly cheap for the amount of paint you actually get and as you use more paint, you would expect it to dry more quickly. For the six months I've got out of it, it's been good value for money, but would I buy it again? Mm, probably not. I have learnt that I want to continue painting with gouache and will be looking for colours I want to use in order to build a custom palette for myself. If you paint with gouache, I'd love to hear what some of your favourite paints are. As you might have noticed, I'm building up my painting in layers again, this time with the darkest colours underneath creating the shadows and then using lighter and brighter greens on top. I try to vary the colours slightly so that some of my greens have more blue in them and help to give the shadows more dimension and that some have more yellow in them as if the sun is reflecting off of the leaves. In more detailed paintings like this, I find having my lightest greens as the top layer the most effective for making them pop off the page. The flowers are honestly the easiest part of the whole thing. Rather than painting detailed petals, I like to dot my chosen colour, in this case white, over the strands of grass. I try to keep it quite random as in real life you wouldn't expect them to be in organised rows. Once all the flowers are in place, I find it really brings the whole painting together. I also added in a few yellow and purple flowers for some variety, but the white steals the show here. Of course, once this satisfying tape peel is done, I finish off the spread by adding in my days of the week. I wanted to use some varying shades of green to paint some circles for each day, which ties it all in, making the page more cohesive. I am really, really happy with how this month has turned out. It's probably one of my favourite themes ever. And as I said before, I'm already sad at the prospect of saying goodbye to it. Make sure you check out my Instagram page to keep an eye out for the other spreads and individual process videos. And I'll leave a link to my Etsy store down below for those that would like to check out the range of stickers, prints and digital downloads I have available. As always, there's no pressure on this, it's just there in case you'd like it. I'd just like to thank everybody who's made it this far in this very, very long Plan With Me video. I hope you've enjoyed it and to round off, let's finish by seeing how it all looks together. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and I'm sure I'll see you very soon. Okay, bye guys.